Uh, hi everyone, uh, last video we managed to uh, get our first successful homing. Uh, this video was like an hour 30 long and uh, let's say not very well edited, but that's not the point. Uh, what we're going to do today uh, is, uh, A, I'm going to try to keep this video as short as possible, um, and uh, B, I'm simply going to fix uh, every drawback and uh, the problems that we are currently facing uh, because of the homing, because the solution I had adopted had its fair share of uh, downside and uh, little bugs that I need to fix uh, right now. So uh, to remind us of uh, what that was, uh, I'm gonna first take a look at exactly what I did uh, in the last video. So we successfully uh, homed uh, the, let's say, idler using the uh, X min pin. Uh, and uh, basically inside the end stop update, which basically checks whether an end stop has been hit or not, um we always check for the x-min pin and uh, if this x-min pin is triggered then uh planner and stop triggered uh, it will call the x-axis um, for the end stop and uh, it will then call stepper and stop triggered and that itself uh, will call quick stop and basically what quick stop does is simply stop everything and uh, saves um, and before that we, we save uh, the position of each axis. Um, so in my case I'm not using the x-axis first uh, so when using the x-axis we should not save the position of the x-axis and uh, secondly I am um, yeah, there, there, there's no either axis defined. Uh, so all the position handling uh, had to be done inside my um, modified uh, code. So inside the mpmmu.cpp file, which I'm going to find right here. And uh, that's what you see right here. Um, so basically, uh, at the, the first tool change, so let's say that, that you're through, you start your print, you are with the, the red filament. Uh, you print, you print, print, then you call tool change, let's say T0. Uh, if uh, it checks if the Euler home variable uh, is true or false, and uh, that's because by default it will be false. So when you start on the printer, uh, you have no clue of where the Euler actually is, and so you need to get positional accuracy of that Euler. So uh, in order to get that, um, we first enable the end stop so that we that we the end stop will be currently checking for any collision. Uh, then we set the variable homing Euler to true. Uh, I may use a variable um, later uh, and uh, not gonna say much more about that. Uh, then we start a move using planner buffer line zero zero composition E plus 110 one. Uh, which this is a huge move. We won't need that. I will shorten that to what it should be uh, But that was simply for testing so that the module would not instantly call like a problem uh, or stop moving before the end stop was triggered um, 10 uh, being the feed rate I believe and one being the uh, extruder in question. So here uh, I'm using extruder one so um, this is the extruders that I'm going to connect to uh, the idler. So uh, it then synchronizes the planner. So that basically what that means is uh, wait for the move to finish. And um, so what happens is the move continues, continues, continues. Then it hits an end stop or at least you hope it does. Uh, and once the end stop is hit, um, the end stop cancels the current movement. So at that point, planner synchronize will return, oh, we have finished all our move because we just canceled the move right here. 
uh, then we update the position. I will need to work on that. Um, basically, there's still a, a position for the extruder and I need to get that correct because uh, if, uh, let's say, I update for this position for, uh, let's say, 100,000, uh, because the move will finish way earlier and at a certain place that I don't know of, uh, that means that I may have an inaccurate position for the extruder, uh, which can cause some problems later. So I need to take that into account. Uh, that will come later when we'll have the actual extruder assembly. Uh, but for now, I'm going to focus on another issue that I'm going to mention in a bit. Um, then it's just uh, check. So uh, if the printer dies right after we've done this, that means that the move uh, wasn't validated. So that means that the end stop didn't uh, wasn't triggered, uh, and that's simply a f function of end stop that simply uh, returns. So if the last move failed to trigger uh, an end stop, call kill. So that will kill the printer if uh, an end stop has not been triggered. That means that we've moved the axis way past its uh, theoretical limit. Uh, and we still did not trigger an end stop. That means that there is a problem somewhere. Uh, we then set the idler position to zero, uh, zero being the home position. So now we have updated the idler position and we know that it has been homed. Um, and uh, then we pair idler homes and we, we, we send also the, the idler position. So there's, that was just a, a little check, but we won't need that. Um, and uh, end stop not homing, that's simply to tell the end stop don't wait for any uh, for any like new information so you don't need to be active anymore uh, and that's going to save processing power because you don't need to check every half half millisecond uh, whether the end stop has been triggered or not uh, and then we set the variable idler home to true uh, so that when you change to another tool uh, let's say uh, well you don't have to rehome you know the position and um, after that, I'm going to do the, the specific moves and store the the idler position variable and do a move based on that. But that's going to come later. Now I have to handle the main problem, which is uh, I'm using the x um, the x min uh, end stop. And why am I using the x min and say not the x max that I'm not using for now? Uh, it's simply because the um, x max is not defined yet and I'm worried that if I do define it, uh, it will simply stop uh, the, it will actually wait for it to have, it, for it to have an actual like max x and so. Um, so I'm going to try to find a solution and I will come back to you uh, once I have it. Okay, so I think I managed to solve all of our problems. So um, we had two problems. So first, I don't necessarily want the printer to check uh, for X max uh, when homing, let's say the Z axis only. Um, so that means I need to have a condition in order to process the specified end stop. So let's say when I'm homing another axis, I don't want to check whether the either end stop has been hit or not. Um, and how did I do that? I simply created a function inside um, my uh, cppnh file for the multimetrial upgrade, uh, which simply returns uh, a boolean, uh, which is homing idler. And this homing idler uh, boolean that I talked about uh, before that um, is basically set to true um, right as the homing begins. Uh, and now I just needed to set it to false once the homing is done. No, once we have validated the home, that should be enough. Um, let's say, and now we set it to false. And uh, that way, let's say that we 
home are other um, and then we home let's say only the x-axis it won't check for the max being triggered or not um, when doing that and that's actually extremely important so imagine that I home the idler first for some reason uh, once that idler is homed um, let's say that I send g28 which is home all uh, what it would actually do would be it would check uh, for the end stop x x max would also trigger as an x end stop and if the idler is still at the zero position because if we didn't use it it's going to stay on the uh, end stop uh, and the part position is also pressing the end stop so if we don't um, specify a condition when we send g28 it'll say okay the x axis is already pressing the end stop and then we'll try to move the x axis away from the end stop, but the end stop will still be triggered because the x max end stop is the uh, is actually triggered by the idler and not the x axis. So now you could say, hey, you could have simply defined a new, let's say, um, end stop named idler end stop, and that would have a specific pin and that stuff. Uh, yes that's true but that would be a lot of work first and b in terms of compatibility with uh, like previous or later versions of marlin uh, that would actually cause a few problems so those problems being uh, that if i create a new f let's say function and they let's say modify the way that they process their ends up uh, i will certainly have a problem but in that case, I simply need to, to stick to what they're doing. So, I mean, in, in both cases, it would be a problem. But since we are using xmax, uh, it's already going to be coded for basically every board that has multiple ends up. So, let's say the XKR Pro, the actual pin file um, that is by default inside Marlin for the XKR Pro, uh, actually mentions the, let's say, E0 uh, end stop as... Um, as an x max and stop uh, and if well well theoretically you could go and modify the file inside the board uh, so that it specify that it's indeed the idler um, and stop Th that would mean a bit of work and that would also mean that it wouldn't be compatible and I, th there's no way that that would be in the official release at least for now um, and my guess is with the, the current option that I'm taking it's not going to be in any kind of uh, final or official release but I, I should be able to keep that compatible with the version different version of Marlin for actually quite a bit of time because they don't have any reason to change their end stop logic there's nothing super innovative that's going to happen in that and uh, the basic planner uh, planner uh, commands may change but I doubt because it's really uh, let's say the the foundations of Marlin um, and basically this way uh, I have not tested it yet I will test it with you uh, we should be able to trigger it with the x max end stop so this way we have a specific end stop for our uh, homing and we don't have like they, they don't share the same end stop as they did before uh, it should not um, wait for any triggering uh, when it's not homing the idler and uh, everything on Zeit side of things. So everything about like my idler homing and uh, the other axis homing uh, interference should theoretically be fixed. So now I'm going to uh, build that, hoping uh, that it works. Well, it does not because for some reason platform IO is not coming up right now. I will build for my board, which is the SKR Pro V1.1. Um, oh wait, that's not the right one. Icecar Pro. And uh, once it's built, I will simply upload it to the board and I will go get my phone so that I can show you exactly what's happening. Okay, so I just successfully set up the Droid Cam. Uh, what I will do now is I will simply reinstall my test setup right here and uh, then we will go and go ahead and implode the code. Uh, so I'll do that right now. Okay, so now I have uh, successfully um, transferred the firmware onto the SD card. 
and I will flash it to the board right now. So now you can see that there's this uh, little green LED right here that is flashing and uh, that's simply when the, the firmware is uploading uh, it does that. Uh, so now we have the new firmware on. Uh, I'm going to open front face uh, right here. I'm going to move my face uh, to the left so that you can see exactly what I'm doing. Um, okay, so front face is opened. On the right, we can simply send uh, decode commands. And uh, what I will do is I will connect the printer. Uh, the printer is now connected. Uh, and uh, before I send the T0 command, which should initiate the Euler homing, I will go get myself. Oh, I have it right there. So I have this uh, trusty screwdriver that will help me simulate an end stop. So basically how that works, an end stop is literally a switch. Uh, and it simply shorts two wires together. Uh, and this indicates the board that the end stop has been hit. And how can I simulate it with a screwdriver? So basically a screwdriver is metal, so it's conductive. I just poke at the uh, little connector, uh, not poke, I just touch the connector uh, with that metal screwdriver. It connects the two pins responsible uh, for the um, end stop. So there there are three pins on that connector. So uh, you can see the, the, the one on the far left right here uh, is uh, ground or 5 volt, I don't remember. The one in the middle is ground or 5 volt as well. And the one on the right is the actual data pin. So if I short the one on the right with the one in the middle, uh, it, it, it simulates an uh, uh, ensemble being hit. So now I'm going to send uh, T0. And T0 has been sent. You can see that this little motor is moving. I'm going to short the X max and stop and we'll see what it does. And uh, I've successfully stopped it perfectly. So I used the X max and stop, which is this one, uh, to actually uh, simulate an end stop. And uh, that worked uh, well. Now I do have a bit more testing to do uh, to see if there's still no uh, interferences with the actual normal homing or regular homing. But based on what I saw, this should not be the case. And in order to do that, I actually need way more stepper motors. I need at least one for another axis and another stepper driver. And I don't that have that on hand right now. And it's, it's it would simply take a bit too much time. Um, and I'm pretty sure that it works. So we can see that we have, uh, well, fixed all our issues. Uh, so that video was probably way shorter and faster actually that than the last one. Uh, that's because I knew what I was going to do. And I also knew um, basically uh, how much time it would take me. Uh, why was the last video literally an hour long, an hour and a half long? That's because I tell, told myself you have five hours to fix that problem. If you don't fix it, you still have to upload something. And uh, simply I was filming every single second of uh, me working and you can... Imagine that editing five hours of video uh, and keeping it uh, relatively short, so under 15 minutes, is super hard. Uh, so this one should be way shorter than you watch. If you watch till the end, uh, well, that's probably because you enjoy that type of videos and uh, are interested in this project. So make sure to subscribe and turn on notifications so that you get notified when I post a new video. And uh, yeah, that's it. Uh, regarding where we are at in this project, I've, well, let's say, I've gone through the main uh, obstacle that I had left, uh, at least on the programming side of things, uh, which was that Isla homing. Uh, now we should be able to do really good and really fast progress. Um, I've also had an idea for, I don't know if you remember, uh, far back, uh, back during the summer, uh, I had some plans on doing a self rewinding spool holder. Uh, and I was pretty sure that it would work relatively fast, but well, it, it, it didn't. Uh, and uh, I found a solution to that, and it's actually quite creative, and it will be useful also for people that have the regular MME2. So uh, this will take me some time, because the design is, is relatively simple, but still it uses some like gears and stuff, and that always takes a bit of time to get right. Um, so you'll probably have a video coming up on that in the next... Uh, I'm going to say month or weeks uh, because at that point I, I really don't know uh, how much time I'm going to spend on this YouTube channel on this project because of university as I said before 
and um, for like the, the final and global result, I, I believe that we are really close to a, a physical prototype. Well, we have the physical prototype. It's right here. I can show it to you. But we are really close to having the, the actual firmware to run it. And uh, once we have the firmware to run it, we can do the little modifications to make it run smoother and better and uh, to hopefully get a functional um, multi-material upgrade. And once that's done, uh, we'll spend quite a bit of time to make uh, an actually easy to watch video uh, explaining how to do that on basically any printer. Uh, well, I hope you like this, this video and uh, we'll see you.